So, Kenobi, Obi Wan Kenobi, episode one. I will say, it's great to see you and McGregor come back to the role, and I think it's it's what he brings more life to the character this time than he ever did in the prequels. And the prequels, his performance was great. You know, he was one of the best aspects of the prequel trilogy. Uh, but I think this time with a new director, and writers, and fresh pair of eyes handling the character, and after a lot of reflection and what could have been done right about the prequels. I feel like Hugh McGregor is able to play Kenobi better than what he did in the prequels. In the prequels, in ways, it was kind of like robotic. You know, even though there was nothing, that wasn't his performance, I just felt that the direction of what he had to do for George Lucas, it just didn't sit right at times. And I wouldn't blame Hugh for that though, he was just doing what he was told and did a good freaking job with what he was able to do. Um, I felt that, you know, there's something more realistic about Kenobi than about their performance this time. He feels more, you know, like an actual human being, as opposed to a character, the way it was in the prequels. But, uh, so Kenobi, uh, the first episode is set 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. Uh, starts off with an opening scene at the, uh, what well, appears to be the Jedi Temple in Corsican. And it shows the stormtroopers coming down and they're slaughtering all the Jedi and all during Execute Order 66. And you hear Palpatine say that as well. And it shows a scene where uh, there's a Jedi training uh, the younglings, Padawans, and then stormtroopers come in, not stormtroopers, clones, the clones come in and start shooting them all, and then she's trying to defend them, sacrifices herself, uh, saving them, and then it cuts to uh, 10 years later with Kenobi. So what he's doing, he's got a job, and he's basically making a living that way, and goes back to his hut, the same hut that I think that was in Star Wars Episode 4, you hope. So he's... he's basically give up on being a Jedi and he's blending in. He's he just sees himself as another regular man now, just out working, doing his job, comes back and gets what he needs, uh, you know, parts and all for whatever, if it's a ship or something, and just, you know, taking care of himself all while looking over uh, Luke Skywalker at his uncle Owen Lars's uh, farm. So um he's hiding and rightly so, I don't blame him, I understand why. And uh, Darth Vader and the Emperor have sent like uh, these Inquisitors down, and they're all trying to hunt down the remaining Jedi that they know are alive, and just kill them all. And they're, brain- they're trying to convince you know all the populations of the class that the Jedi were evil, and uh, they never cared, when really it's the other way around, it was the Emperor and the Sith that were the evil ones and didn't care. Uh, I think the people I think the people are smart enough to realise that they know that's not entirely true, that you know the Jedi were on their side, the Jedi were the freedom fighters of the galaxy. And they're just too afraid to speak up because, you know, with these inquisitors and all, you even look at them funny. They'll just shoot you dead or, or chop your hand off. One of the two, if both not if not both. So Kenobi has given up on the force because uh you know, in the prequel trilogy they had, you know, the Jedi Council, they had, you know, the Republic, and that was all destroyed by Darth Vader taken away. And <coughs> you know, he was defeated. Doesn't really believe in the force anymore, and he's just you know this broken man. But uh, and, and there's another there's another Jedi who tries to reignite hope in Kenobi and tries to you know convince him to come back to the Jedi and fight these guys, take these bastards down. And Kenobi's just like no. And I understand. I think they've done a better job of executing how Kenobi has gave up on the force a lot better than what they did with Luke Skywalker in the Last Jedi because Kenobi has an actual reasoning which makes sense. Luke Skywalker's reason for giving up on the Force, in my opinion, and a lot of people's, a lot of other people's opinions, didn't make any sense. Uh, it just was pretty executed, pretty written. Oh, you just didn't understand the last Jedi. No, it's because we can see the difference between good writing and bad writing, such as uh, somehow Palpatine returned. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, Kenobi is watching over Luke Skywalker and making sure there's not in any danger and. Uh, also, uh, making a living for himself because the guy can't just sit there and watch Luke all the freaking time and just drive him insane. You know, it's not, it's not that, it's just, you know, he has to make a living you know, to get food and water and to live, you know. <coughs> <coughs> and it, it also gives him the opportunity to blend in 
and he, he basically went and buried his lightsaber and Anakin's lightsaber in the sand somewhere. I wonder if that a nod to the Rise of Skywalker where Rey buried uh, Luke's lightsaber and Leia's lightsaber in the sand at the end of it. But um, he's basically, you know, hiding, and rightly so. He knows he doesn't stand, well, he feels he doesn't stand a chance against uh, Darth Vader and the Emperor. So he's basically, um, what happened, we get to see a lot, a young, a young Princess Leia played by a different actress, and that actress was born to play young Princess Leia. She's done a tremendous job. She has that same sassiness, that snarkiness, you know, snarkiness that um, Carrie Fisher brought to the role in, uh, as the Princess Leia in, in the Star Wars trilogy, the original trilogy, and the sequel trilogy. Um, she looks very similar to Carrie Fisher and just gets on the same way. Like, you know this is, this is Princess Leia. It's not just another random actress that, you know, is playing a role and not doing a good job. This is an actress that knows what she's doing and is just playing the part well. And I love that they brought Bale Organa into the Kenobi series. He was in the Star Wars prequels. He was in, he had a cameo in Star Wars Rogue One. And I was wondering, are they going to bring him into the Kenobi? Are they going to bring him in? And if Reagan did, and he's got a bigger part this time. And I love how the, the, they're tying this into the prequels and the original trilogy. It's great. It's brilliant. This, this is good. Um, I'm happy with the Kenobi show. Far happier with the first episode than what I was with Stranger Things 4, episode 1. So basically, Princess Leia runs into a trap. Trap where uh, it was set up by the Inquisitors that, that they've been watching. You know, her plan... And knew where she's going to be and knew the right time to snatch her. And then Bail Organa runs to Kenobi and manages to convince him to pick up the lightsaber again, use the force and go rescue Princess Leia. They don't want to bring too much attention that Princess Leia has been kidnapped because um, they're afraid of her true identity being exposed. Because as far as everybody else knows, she's Leia Organa. If everybody else finds out that she's Leia Skywalker, you know, and Darth Vader and the Emperor here about this, they're going to go out and kill them. They're going to kill her. Probably, or he'll just want her, recruit her to the dark side of the force, whatever. So it ends with the Kenobi finally agree, reluctantly agreeing to go on the rescue mission to get her back. And um, it ends with him walking up uh, to this lady and like the ship that's going to take him away, I think it is. And then the episode just ends there. And I, I'm thinking, this, this is great. You know, this is what then... The way that this show has been written and directed, it's pretty much how the prequels should have been done. I know people say this, the sequel trilogy is what the prequels should have been, but the sequel trilogy is a fucking pile of shit. It really is. Like, yeah, I like The Force Awakens, but it really was a garbage copy of A New Hope. Um, I hated The Last Jedi because it just bastardized Luke Skywalker and, and blah, 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 things as well. Um, the Rise of Skywalker, I actually did enjoy it in the cinema. But it's not a particularly good movie. I think it's the weakest out of them all. I think The Force Awakens was better. And I know some people even said to me, people who hated The Last Jedi even told me they preferred The Last Jedi over The Rise of Skywalkers. The Rise of Skywalkers are absolutely absolute fuck. But this show, The Wee One Kenobi, it's just, you know, it's running at its own pace, its own course. It's not forced nothing. It's not rushed. Um, it's just natural. It's just going with the flow. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. And it's all coming at the right time. You know, there's, there's nothing, it's, it's not like, you know, contrived the way the sequel trilogy was. It's, it's almost like, you know, they learned their lessons and of what not to do. And I'm just glad they appear to have gotten it right with the Kenobi series because they realised that they pissed the fan base off so much with the sequel trilogy. You don't want to do that again. You really don't because the fan base is what's keeping Star Wars alive. You know, and the Star Wars fan base isn't toxic just for expressing their opinions and pointing out the bullshit that Disney was throwing at us. You know, just because they don't want to take accountability for all their social justice warrior crap and bastardizing legacy characters just to make room for the new bland characters that are Mary Sue's and nobody that is too perfect at everything that nobody likes. You know? <sighs> I've got a good feeling about Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, it's just so nice to see you and McGregor playing again. And it's just, you know, it, it feels right. Uh, I, I would recommend if, if you're, you know, if you've given up on Star Wars after the Secret Trilogy, I don't blame you. But um, the Obi Wan Kenobi show, I wouldn't say it's perfect, I wouldn't say it's brilliant, but, you know, episodes one and two are a lot better than what the Secret Trilogy was. 
they, they, they're, they're worthwhile watching. You know, if you're a huge Kenobi fan, give it a watch. I think that's all I have to say. I have been working flat out this week. I was sick on Thursday. I got a cold. had a migraine afraid when I went into work. Uh, this, I had done a shift there tonight. I am wrecked. Mentally I'm only, but physically I am just fucked right now. <sighs> but uh, you know what? Life is good. Could be better. But it's good right now. Ah. <sighs>